So what is SUDEP? SUDEP is an acronym um, of the English language, and it stands for Sudden Unexpected Death in Epilepsy. And what is important is that obviously it can be witnessed or unwitnessed. In most cases, it's not witnessed. And it can be with or without evidence of a seizure. Usually, these people, they are found in very benign circumstances. So they are lying in bed, or they are in front of the uh, toilet, in the bathroom, but they are not in the bath with water, filled with water. There, there are no hints of whatever other disease that could have uh, led to this uh, sudden death. So what, what does it do, SUDEP, with people with epilepsy? Because of SUDEP, they have a 24-fold increased risk of dying suddenly as compared to the general population without epilepsy. And what does it mean for, in terms of um, how many persons actually really die per year? And this is important to um, numbers, so we call it in science incidence rate. And this is the number of persons that die, for instance, of SUDEP in a given population. Let's say in 1,000 people, in one year, how many people do die? And then, uh, for instance, for adults, there's one person of 1,000 people a year uh, with epilepsy who is going to die of SUDEP. And then there was a um, long time the idea that actually in children, the risk is lower. But this is probably not the case. So there, there are new uh, data sets and new um, populations in which we have found that the risk is already the same. It's, it's more or less the same in, in children and adults. So there's about one person um, with epilepsy out of 1,000 who is going to die per year over all uh, epilepsy patients. So the risk is still very low, but it's there. So for you and for the patient, obviously, it doesn't matter how low the risk is. The risk, you have it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So for you, it's actually, it's present every time. Although I have to, I have to stress, it's a, a very low risk per person and per seizure, but it's every time there. So in, in a patient who has epilepsy since early childhood or um, puberty, the risk is about 7 to 8% of dying in SUDEP. And the most important risk factor for SUDEP actually are generalized tonic-clonic seizures. These are the big fits that you all know, that you all fear, uh, where the patients go into a generalized stiffness, and then he starts jerking. And then uh, in the vast majority of these um, seizures, they stop uh, spontaneously after one, two minutes. So what you can see here easily is that the more generalized seizures you have a year, the higher the risk is as compared to people who have no generalized tonic-clonic seizures. What does it mean? Example, um, I have many patients who have like one generalized tonic-clonic seizure a year, and they are happy because they say, yeah, it occurs during night, I can uh, drive and so forth. But they have already um, a triple-fold increased risk of dying uh, suddenly as compared to people who have no generalized tonic-clonic seizures. And then there are people who have like every week a generalized tonic-clonic seizure, they have a 14-fold increased risk. So usually um, in most cases you have a generalized tonic-clonic seizure and this then uh, leads to this suppression of brain activity. I told you this flat EG. And we know from um, animal research and different models of SUDEP, animal models, that um, f from this suppression of the brain, there is uh, a brain wave that goes into the brain stem. And you know that the brain stem is important for uh, breathing, heart rate, and so forth. And this is the reason why the breathing stops. And we call it central apnea. 
So breathing stops. And then because breathing stops, oxygen drops. And this is the reason why the heart stops. And this is what we believe nowadays, um, what I personally call the fatal SUDEP cascade, what happens uh, during uh, SUDEP. So whatever treatment you apply, doesn't matter. It needs to be successful. If it stops seizures, if it leads to better seizure control, then it reduces the SUDEP risk, whatever. If you um, administer uh, additional drugs, you all see the neuropediatricians, the epileptologists, you take already two drugs and he says, well, take a third one. Do it uh, because it decreases the risk of SUDEP. If it's successful, if it's not, then it's not the right combination. Or you go there and they offer you uh, epilepsy surgery, different types of epilepsy surgery. Then uh, do it because if it's successful, it decreases the risk of SUDEP. Or when they say, well, epilepsy surgery is not possible, you, you don't want it for um, different reasons, then they offer you vagal nerve stimulation. Do it because it seems to uh, decrease the risk of SUDEP. And then there, there are other types of um, new devices that could, um, let's say, um, improve seizure control like deep brain stimulation or responsive neurostimulation. If you have a kind of nocturnal supervision, so a supervision during nighttime, this decreases the risk of SUDEP. These are very old studies. Um, and so what did they see? They had um, these baby phones in an institution um, where people with epilepsy lived. And they just realized that those who had roommates or baby phones, they were less likely of dying in SUDEP. So obviously, uh, nocturnal uh, supervision could do something important for the SUDEP risk. So now you're asking yourself, what could we do then for nocturnal supervision? Do we have to sleep with our kids now? 15-year-old boy, girl? The answer is no. There are modern mobile devices nowadays um, that could detect generalized tonic-clonic seizures. I told you that these are the most important um, risk factor, and they go along with um, different signals. So if you have... Uh, let's say this um, stiffening of the muscles, you can record this. There are devices for this. Or when you have these jerks, you can measure them with um, devices, with mobile devices. You can um, measure whatever. You can measure the respiratory movements, the breathing rate. You can measure heart activity. And then there are devices all around. The most, dif the most important problem with these devices is uh, they are not very well tested. So uh, don't buy uh, devices which are not tested, which are not approved. If uh, a generalized tonic-clonic seizure occurs, what could you do? Can you do something or is it better uh, not to know? It, it is much better to know because we know from um, studies that if you uh, detect a generalized tonic-clonic seizure early, if you realize that they don't breathe again, then start cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And this is uh, likely to, um, to recover your um, beloved one. At the moment, the, the experts are not sure whether this cardiopulmonary uh, resuscitation is successful in each and every case. But most cases uh, which were published uh, um, convince us that <coughs> you should give it a go and that it's, that it's very likely that it can recover, actually. In most cases, it did. So, but it needs to start early. Let's say within the first one, two, three minutes. SUDEP is rare. One out of 4,000 children uh, is going to die out of SUDEP, children with epilepsy. 3,999 <coughs> out of 4,000 are not going to die. And this puts it in the right relation. So, and then um, 
be aware, I told you that seizure freedom is very good. Try to achieve it. Um, if you won't achieve seizure freedom, then at least control the generalized tonic-clonic seizures. And then, then you should be relatively safe. So what are the uh, measures that you could take personally, uh, assure, certain that the drugs are re regularly taken? Think about uh, nocturnal supervision. Like five years ago, I had to tell people there are no devices, but they are out now. Um, they are quite expensive still, but in Germany, um, some of the medical insurances, they pay for it. So I think it's something between 500 and 1,500 euros. So it's, it depends on the device. And then, um, you know, it's like for the driving license, when you made your training in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, just make it once every two years, and then you feel safer. And that's all I wanted to tell you today. Thank you very much. <laughs>